is amazing. I, well, that I've never heard before. Confidence is not to compare. Now, one of the things that you say um, as the tips in, in the handbook that I read, um, so obviously you've got the 12 chapters and then the, the mindsets. So that each one of the chapters in the handbook uh, of self-leadership is actually uh, a single mindset. And they're all very, very valid points. And then I really love the part that talks about the tips. They're short and sweet. And one of the major things that, you know, being somebody that is in the industry of um, learning and development as well, doing a lot of executive coaching, most of the time what I see, whether it's male or female, people come to me and say, I can't say no. And that's exactly one of the things that you say in that, in that book. You've got to learn to say no, but you actually teach it in a different way than most self-help books do. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Elaborate more? Sure. Okay. So firstly, you know, to be a leader of self or others, we have to be decisive. And, and it's worth going back to where does the word decision come from? Well, it comes from the same root as the word incision. So a surgeon cuts into and a decision is to cut apart. So every decision has a yes and a no. Now, I've shared the, the world stages with some of the, the most famous motivational speakers. I, I won't do any name dropping now, but you know who they are. And, and a lot of them will say, you know, you have to say yes to your dreams or yes to your vision and very inspiring. But the, the, the reality is in life, before we can say yes to something, we have to say no to something else. The no right. actually precedes the yes. If you, you know, if, if you wanted to get good grades in university, you had to say no to some of the parties. All right. So before you said yes to the study. Right. So if, if you if you want to lose weight, you have to say no to the pastries to say yes to uh, the, the, the desired waistline. So no precedes the yes. The other thing that I do is I, in terms of teaching this is I talk about the fact that we lost the no or we got disavowed from the no when we're very young children. You know, mm. when, you're, when you're two and a half, three years old and you start to develop this ego, this level of independence, me, not me, our parents said, don't you say no to your father, don't you say no to your mother. Yes, and so, oh my gosh. So I teach this by firstly um, teaching ownership. And I learned this originally through through neurosemantics, but it's, it, you know, I've developed it with, you know, the, the, the understanding of locus of control is what do we what do we actually have ownership of? And, and as a human being, we uh, our sense of personal space is is built with our ownership of our ability to think, our ability to feel, our ability to speak up and our ability to take action. And, and in fact, you know, in my 2012 book with Dr. Anna Kazam, we define self-leadership as the practice of intentionally influencing your thinking, feeling, and actions towards your objectives. Um, uh, and I, I just wanted to slip that in because a lot of people are talking about self-leadership, but they're blurring the constructs. So, you know, you have to start with the definition. Anyway, so if, if ownership is I have to own my thoughts, I have to own my feelings. Now... Uh, when I grew up, I, I, I was taught to read The Guardian and The Telegraph because one was right wing, one was left wing, and the truth is somewhere in the middle. And never is it more important in this age of fake news is to go, what do I actually think about this issue? Mm. And, and, and people got very lazy about that. Right? You know, they're, 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 they're getting their, their news in YouTube bites, and you may be watching this on YouTube. Please don't think I'm, I'm knocking the platform, but don't, you know, with confirmation bias, you've got to be very careful. To, to, to work out what you think on an issue. You understand confirmation bias. People are going to search, you know, for, for the, the, you know, if you believe the earth is flat, then you're going to search for videos about flat earth. Um, you're, not going, you're, not, you're, not going, you're not going to watch the ones that show you that the earth is round. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is flat. Anyway, so that's my confirmation. <laughs> but, uh, sorry. Bit of, bit, of, bit of British humor. British, British humor. Again. So, so you've got to own your, you own your own thoughts, and, and that takes a bit of energy. What do I think about this? Which means reading things from different perspectives or talking to people from different viewpoints. Then you've got to own your feelings. And I ask people, do you own your feelings? And they say yes. And I say, well, have you ever said he makes me angry, she makes me frustrated, or they make me feel dot, 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 fill in blank? And people say, well, yeah, of course I say that. And of course, the realize the moment you say he makes me angry, 
is the moment you've externalized your locus of control. Right. Whose anger is it? Well, it's always our own. If somebody cuts in front of you in traffic, I say, does that person make you angry? And my audience, without hesitation, say, yes, of course they do. And I go, no, they don't. That person did not get up in the morning and time their journey to cut you in traffic. They don't know who you are. You're not that important, right? The, the fact is that that person was in a hurry or a bad driver or they didn't see you or they're rude is inconsequential. The, the event caused you to choose to respond with anger. Uh -huh. Now, not the anger is not a bad emotion. Anger is the emotion of, of defense and also it's the fire for change. Uh, but I have to own my anger. I have to go, well, what am I angry about? So the self-awareness, uh -huh. if I'm angry, this is the heart of emotional intelligence, if I'm angry, or, 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 you know, the seat of cognitive behavioral therapy is what's what's triggering this and, and what's my level of control around this. Mm -hmm. So now we own our thoughts, we own our feelings and then our words, we need to speak up um, and we need to take action. And and so if we take ownership and, and we, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm for, for people uh, listening to this on audio, I'm gesturing a circle around my body right now is 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 our sense of self extends beyond our uh, our physical being we, we have a sense of personal space because if somebody steps yes. inside your personal space it's uncomfortable uh you're a, you live in singapore people people mark their personal space in a in a coffee shop with with a packet of tissues and and own that <laughs> piece of space the british Absolutely. will Absolutely. oh my gosh <laughs> the, the british will put their towel down on a beach anywhere in the world and they've captured the germans yes Yes, well, the Germans have got the, the, the lounges around the pool. You know, everybody's marking their territory. And, and, yes. and that level of marking and nationalism, of course, is on the increase globally. But that's another topic. So, so I start now by saying, what, well, what's mine? What's my personal space? Because if I know what's mine, there's something I will defend. Because, you know, as, as a woman, as you know, if, 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 uh, if uh, a male uninvited steps into your personal space, that's a level of abuse, isn't it? And, and you, uh -huh. would, you would push back on that, wouldn't you? Well, you would certainly want to push back on that. And, and I ask my audiences to really get in touch with what is so personal to you. I mean, it could be a toothbrush, as simple as a toothbrush. Oh. You, know, if, you know, even married couples don't want to share toothbrushes sometimes because it's very personal. And so what is personal to us? And because once we get that sense of ownership, we can recognize that this is, this is really our sacred space. Is, is this is ours and therefore we have the right to say no to anybody in, impinging on that. And if I get people to that raw understanding of, of, of our foundational developmental psychology, this is me. I am responsible for my thinking, my feeling, my words, my action. That's what I'm responsible for. And that's where it stops because outside of this circle of me, is somebody else's thinking, feeling, words, and actions, and the consequences of their actions, and I'm not responsible for that. Mm. I can't be responsible. I'm responsible for my words and actions, and I will. And as a self leader, I will take the consequences of that. But I can't be responsible for somebody else's, and so I have to say no to that responsibility. And that's huge for people because culturally, we've been told, "Oh, you're responsible for your wife, or you're responsible mm. for your husband." And I'm yes. very in people's faces with this when I say, no, you're not. Now, you know, my wife is, uh, is an intelligent, uh, she speaks multiple languages, she's intelligent, she's even more confident than I am, confident, beautiful woman. I am not responsible for her, but I am accountable to her because we're married, we have an agreement. But I can't be responsible for her, she's grown up. And, and trying to be responsible for another adult is a dysfunctional relationship. Exactly. So we have, we have to say it's codependency in psychology. We have to say no. Now, I have children. Am I responsible for my children? Absolutely, because they're not yet old enough to be responsible for themselves. But my accountability to society is to raise my children to a point that they can be useful members of society by being responsible for themselves. Mm. And then I've done my job as a parent now. <laughs> That's a whole nother topic of parents that don't raise children to be responsible for themselves. So mm. no is the firewall between me, myself, and not me, other people. To the point that you could say this, what other people think about me is none of my business. Mm. Hi, did you enjoy that video? Did you learn something? Well then go to learning.selfleadership.com and there's lots more resources there. And remember, 
subscribe to this YouTube channel.